everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Victoria Montefusco and I am a lover of makeup. I love colorful makeup, eyeshadow, highlighter, sparkly things. I love indie makeup. I love everything. Um, so welcome to my channel. This is my first video that I'm ever going to post. So especially welcome. I'm super excited to have you all here today. Um, today I'm playing with the Shroud Cosmetics uh, and Butte Bean. It's freaking Bats palette. So this is super exciting for me. Um, I've been wanting this palette for, for like basically since I saw the sneak peeks. Um, I got it about a month ago, so I can give you all a really good review, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to show you how to create this eye look. So if you want to see that, um, and if you want to see more fun makeup content, uh, you should definitely like this video, subscribe to my channel, you know, all the usual YouTube stuff. So let's get into it. All right. Now I'm going to walk you all through a quick little tutorial using the Shroud Cosmetics It's Freaking Bats palette. If you're not aware, this was the palette uh, that Betty Jean, also known as Butte Bean, did in collaboration with Shroud Cosmetics. I'll give you a review later and a little bit of, of detail on this palette a little bit later on in the video, but this is the palette I'm going to be using on my eyes today. If I look kind of crazy uh, underneath my eyes, it's because I bake uh, before I uh, put on eyeshadow. And this is because uh, I like to do my face makeup before I do my eye makeup, which apparently you're not supposed to do. So this is the reason why my under eyes look a little bit ghostly and crazy. So don't ignore that, that'll be gone um, in, in a little while. So first, I'm going to use my favorite eyeshadow primer, which is also conveniently from the drugstore. This is the Milani eyeshadow primer. This stuff is the bomb.com. Um, but if you like an eyeshadow primer that provides more of an opaque base, I don't recommend this for you because this is very much dries clear and it dries translucent. So if you like an opaque base, like a matte paint pot, um, I would go for, for something different. But if you like a translucent one, this one's great. So I'm going to put this all over my eyelids, extending it all up into the brow bone and just keeping that tacky. So my goal is once I go into the eyeshadows, I want this primer to be still tacky, but not so tacky that my shadow just clings to it. I personally do not set my eye primer because I find that the pigmentation just isn't there and I just prefer to have more of a sticky base versus a completely set base. So that's the eyeshadow primer. So I'm actually basing this off of a look that I did earlier this week that I really enjoyed. So I'm first going to go into this shade right here called Trap Up, and I'm gonna put this into my inner part of my crease. So I am going to use a small crease brush. I'm actually going to use the Refer number 13. This is a natural hair crease brush, but if you prefer synthetic, you can use that as well. This is just what I prefer, but any small crease brush will do. So we're gonna tap into this shadow, tap off the excess, and we're gonna tap this on my inner part of my crease. So right in here. Just tap, 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 tap. My goal here isn't to have the most blended crease in the world. I actually want to have it be a little bit unblended, in fact, so that uh, you can really see the color pay off. That's what I want. I'm not looking for like a diffused crease. I'm looking for like a lot of color and a lot of payoff here. So I'm just going to tap this into the crease. This is a really beautiful, just like swampy green, which these are the kind of shades I love. I think these are so flattering on the eyes and they're a lot of fun to play with. So I highly recommend if you don't have something like this in your collection and you want to play with a little bit of color, a swampy green is a good place to start. Okay. So here's that first part of my eye. So you see all of this color is just all packed in right there. So don't worry about blending it. That part will come later. So we're actually going to take another small crease brush. This is the refer number 14, which is very similar to the refer number 13, except it's slightly different shape. So we're going to go into a, a different shade in this palette. We're going to go into spooky, which is right here. This like purpley, bluey color. So spooky is the one we're going to go into next. And we're going to put that on the outer part of our crease. Again, packing. We're not worrying about blending. We're just trying to pack this on there. So we're going to tap off the excess so we don't have a bunch of blue fallout under our eyes. And we're going to put this on the outer part of our crease. 
We're also going to make sure that where the green and the blue meet, we want that to be kind of blended. We don't want that to be a harsh line. That is not the look that we're going for. So we're probably gonna go back into Trappa again and just make sure that that's all blended out. Okay, let's see. So, okay, here we go. See, we have that blue meeting with the green, but we wanna blend that blue with the green a little bit more. So we're gonna go back into Trappa again with their small crease brush. So back into Trappa, tap off your excess, and we're gonna meet the blue and the green together and just make that a beautiful swampy harmony. That's what we're looking for here. All right, perfect. So this is after you're done with your crease work. We'll probably go back into the crease a little bit more at another point, but this is good just to begin with. Again, don't worry about blending. That's not what we're looking for here. We just want a bunch of packed color on there. So next up, I really want to darken my outer corner because I like a very dramatic sort of outer corner. That's really what I go for every day. So we're going to be going to this shade, Dairy, and we're going to be taking just a packer brush. I'm using a refer number two, but any sort of packer shader brush that you like to use will definitely work synthetic or natural hair. So again, we're gonna tap in, tap off the excess. I'm sure you all know the drill by now. And we're gonna take this onto our outer corner and just go in. We're just gonna do tapping and slight swiping motion. And we really wanna go from the lash line right into where the blue meets up and stop using this shade where the green meets the blue. So about halfway through the lid. So we're gonna take some more on the brush and tap it on there. You're gonna find that you're gonna need to dip into here a few times to get the payoff that you want and the color in every single place that you want. Don't worry about that. I found that the shade blends pretty easily. So again, just tapping it on there. Tap, tap, tap. Perfect. Okay. At this point, this is what your eye look looks like. You probably think, oh my goodness, you look crazy. Yes, I do. But we're going to be blending this out. So it's just going to be a beautiful blended out kind of look. So we're going to be taking a blender brush. I'm using a refer number 15. Any sort of tapered blending brush will do. And we're going to start blending out that dark outer corner shade uh, right here in the middle of the lid and also blending it out with the blue. So just do your circular motions, circular motions, blend, blend, blend. And we're gonna blend it up here as well. I also like to sometimes drag it out a little bit to create sort of like a wing with my shadow. You can do that if you want to as well, but I think today I'm gonna to keep my shape more rounded on my eyeshadow, but just know that that's an option if you do like more of that wing shape. Okay, there we go. That's what it looks like blended out. But I always actually go back into my outer corner shade and take that dark shade again and just pack it on to that outermost part of my outer part of my eyelid. Just so it goes basically like a gradient. So we have that, that light blended part to like a medium part to a dark, darker part of the outer corner. So that's what I do. I just take a little bit more of that shade and tap it onto that outer corner just so we have a little bit of a gradient. There we go. That's what it looks like. And this is basically all the mattes we're gonna be using on the lid. We are gonna use a few mattes on the um, lower lash line, but that's after we use our shimmers. So I always use a glitter glue whenever I use a shimmer on my lid. You do not have to use a glitter glue. Um, this is just something I prefer because I find that the shimmers stick really well to it and it provides a nice tacky base for those shimmers and just makes my shimmers a lot more intense and metallic. And that's what I really look for. Um, but you don't have to use a glitter glue. Regular primer is fine. You can even do a cut crease with a concealer or a specialty cut crease product if you're into that. Um, you can even use a wet brush and, and use your metallics like that. But I prefer glitter glue and using my finger to, to apply my metallics. So we're gonna take this Too Faced glitter glue, but any glitter glue will do. I've heard the NYX one's really good as well, it just hasn't been what I've tried yet. Take your glue Too Faced glitter glue or any other glitter glue that you have and take a brush, a flat brush like this. This is just a Morphe, just like really old 
cheap brush. So any sort of brush will do. One that you don't mind getting sticky with glitter glue. And I just squeeze it out on my finger. Just a very small amount. You don't need a lot. If you put too much, you're gonna find that your eyes are gonna be a sticky, creasy mess. And I just put that on my brush. And we're gonna put that everywhere on the lid until we reach that middle part where we put our darkest matte shade. So just do that, boom, boom, boom. And then once you get to that middle part, try to blend it out a little bit with your brush. So just blend it out a little bit into that bluish purple. Okay, so there's our sticky base. Beautiful. So we're actually gonna use two different shimmers on the lid. I'm going to go into zero and also uh, let's do handbook. So zero and handbook. These are the two shimmers I'm gonna use on my lid. So we're gonna start with zero just so we match that like purple to green sort of look that we were going for. So taking my finger, oh my goodness, look at how beautiful this shadow is. This is just absolutely stunning. And it looks beautiful on the lids as well. So take that and tap it on that first half of your eye. And you're just gonna see how beautiful this looks on the lid. Oh my goodness. See, look at that. That is just stunning. That is like a purple, that's like a perfect purple to blue duochrome. And I, ugh, I love those kinds of shades. They're, they're just beautiful on the lids. And so next, after we go into zero, we're gonna go into handbook. I just use my finger that's next to my pointer finger and we're gonna go in there. I promise I'm not flipping you all off. <laughs> so we're gonna go into handbook and we're gonna put that on the inner part. Again, matching that purple to green sort of fade that we're doing. So put it all on your inner part of your lid and then blend it in to that purple zero that we were using to make sure that's a nice look. And then we're gonna dip a little bit back into zero again on your pointer finger and just make sure that's really intense on your lid. Beautiful. See, look at how beautiful that looks. That's a really nice look. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dust off my bake, but if you do your face after your eyes, you don't, and you don't do bake, or you just don't do bake in general, don't worry about this part, obviously. So we're gonna dust that off. All right, here we go. And now we're gonna work on our lower lash line work that we wanna do. So I'm going to take this shade called Adams right here, this dark green, and I'm gonna use that small crease brush again, I think, just to go into there and really just get in there on that lower lash line. So we're gonna take it, tap off the excess. And really my goal here is to hug the lower lash line as much as possible. Because we're gonna go back into that light green again to really blend it out a bit. So again, just keep it close to your lash line. And I like to go from the outer corner up until about right here. Just a smidge before my inner corner. Okay. So that's what that looks like just with the Atom shade. But I, I personally like my lower lash line to be a bit more blended out. So we're gonna take Trappa again, that light green that we put all up in our crease and we're gonna blend that out as well. Blend out that lower lash line. Don't be afraid to do a dramatic lower lash line. I think it can be really fun, especially if you're like going to work or something or you just need a quick look to get out the door. What's really fun is to do something like light and shimmery on the lid and just pop a fun color in the lower lash line. This is something really easy that you can do to make yourself look a bit put together and have a little bit of, bit of a pop of color to your eye look, so. The general rule that I follow is go in with my darker color and then go with a lighter version of that color to blend it out on the lower lash line. All right, here it is. So this is the lower lash line and the eye look uh, on top. So. I know this is one of my first YouTube videos, so you may not be familiar with this now, but I personally love a blinding inner corner and brow bone. That is what I live for. So I'm going to do that as well, but I am going to incorporate one of the shades from the It's Freaking Bats palette, of course, because I'm trying to use as many shades as I can in this eye look. So we're gonna take the shade Sam, which is this middle one. This is like a dirty, money, like greenish, goldish kind of color. It's beautiful, but it's not light enough to be a true inner corner shade. So I'm actually gonna layer something on top of it and you're gonna see that what beautiful effect that this has on the eyes. So we're gonna put that in our inner corner. All right, so see, 
this is what that shade looks like just by itself and it looks kind at least on my skin tone which i'm extremely pale keep that in mind uh this looks very just like dark and it doesn't really like open up the eye which is really the goal of a nice bright inner corner um this is just not something that i personally like to go for like a dark inner corner so i'm actually going to layer something beautiful over it so i have a bunch of singles from Terra moons this is one of their empty magnetic palettes and they have something called iridescent chameleons and these shadows are the most beautiful shifty shadows ever i mean these are some of my holy grail shadows these are definitely my holy grail for inner corner brow bone sort of situation so i'm going to take one of these actually i think i'm going to take this one that i have on the on this top corner here this one's called light ear this is one of their original iridescent chameleons so i'm just going to take this on my finger oh my god look at this this is so beautiful <laughs> if you love a blinding inner corner as much as i do these are a must have in your collection they are just i mean people will ask you like oh my goodness what's on your eyes i love it because they're just so special so we're going to take this shade light ear we're going to put it over that inner corner shade that i put from the it's freaking bats palette and you're just going to see what magicalness this does i mean look at that it just makes it so much brighter so much more interesting it provides just a lot of shine and just beautiful shiftiness i love it i absolutely love it this next step is optional but i love to put these under the brow bone just to provide a little bit of sparkle and shift and just beautifulness and i feel like it ties the look together so i'm going to take that same shade light ear on my finger and we're just going to tap it under my brow bone and to meet those mats that we put in the crease I'm just going to tap 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 so here you go look at how beautiful this looks again you can really see how sparkly and shifty this is i absolutely love it. i'm going to complete my other eye off camera put on some mascara liner put on some lips and i'm going to go into a review of this palette since i have been playing with this palette for about a month and also just provide you my general thoughts on the overall launch of the shroud cosmetics it's freaking bats betty jean butte bean all palette. right this is the completed look with eyeliner mascara lipstick the whole shebang so in case you're wondering what i have on my face that will be in the description box but if you want to know what i have on my lips that will also be in the description box, but I'm also going to tell you real quickly here. So I have the ColourPop Lip Pencil in the shade BFF2. And I also have the Pat McGrath Matte Trance Lipstick in the shade Flesh 3. So that's how I have my lips. So I would just like to provide you all with a quick little review of the Shroud Cosmetics It's Freaking Bats palette, which was in collaboration with Butte Bean. So I've had this palette for about a month had plenty of opportunity to play with it and here are some of my thoughts so the mattes in here they blend beautifully they are nice shadows you can definitely pack them on like i did in the crease in the outer corner for more of a intense colorful look or you can definitely blend them out and they're nice shadows to blend with as well i've done crease looks and, and, and other eyeshadow looks like that too the metallics absolutely beautiful they look wet on the eyes they are nice and creamy on the finger creamy on the lid they don't crease very nice color payoff just beautiful colors and i love 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 the color story in this palette this is a grungy eyeshadow lovers dream if you love color if you love green purple grungy tones this is a great eyeshadow palette but of course it isn't perfect so i'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience ordering this palette receiving this palette all that fun stuff because if you're a lover of indie makeup like i am i'm sure you're a little bit familiar with the absolute chaos that surrounded this palette so this palette came out in early october of this year actually funny story uh, I ordered this palette while recovering from a tonsillectomy. So I was sitting on the couch in a bunch of pain um, trying to order this palette because this palette literally sold out in two minutes. And I was one of the lucky few people who got my hands on it in that original like two minutes literally before it sold out and um, it was open for pre-order. So this palette sold out super quickly. It was open for uh, pre-order. So basically whoever pre-orders it first gets it first in the mail, whatever. So we were told that the packaging hadn't come in yet, but all the shadows were made pretty much and that these would start shipping out in about mid-October. Um, that did not happen. <laughs> so uh, my palette ended up getting here uh, in, in Tennessee where I live to me 
uh, and about, I would say like mid November. So about a month later after it was promised, which of course, as a consumer, I have expectations. Those expectations are let down. I'm not happy, but uh, that, that's okay. Like I understand if, if situations arise, all that. But what was really not fun to deal with as a consumer was the lack of transparency. We had no idea what was happening, why our pallets weren't sending out. All we knew is that they were going to be late, we assumed, because they hadn't, no, nobody got their tracking order number by the time that that October date rolled around and nothing. Um, and then we got some f infrequent updates from the owner of Shroud Cosmetics, but nothing really saying like, here's here's exactly what's happening and then your pallets are going to be sent out basically it was like oh we're going to get them sent out on this date and that date would pass by and nothing and like i know like if you were ordering in like the, the not the original batch but like the pre-orders yeah like she said don't have any expectations they're just going to be sent out when they're sent out in that order and that's fine but i was within the, that original two minutes and we were told middle of october and nothing just nothing happened and it was kind of disappointing as a consumer and i was really looking forward to this palette i really wanted to use it around halloween because it's called the it's freaking bats palette but i wasn't able to and that was just you know kind of upsetting and i just want to also note i order from lots of indie brands um, especially this year and during the pandemic and so i know what it's like to wait for eyeshadow i waited for a cleona order for like literally three or four months so i know what it's like to wait for eyeshadow and i'm willing to wait for eyeshadow what I do not like as a consumer is having dates thrown out and then those dates passing over and over again, just not hearing about what's happening. Like my palette, for example, the tracking number was created and then it just literally sat there just saying pre-transit for like a week. Um, so that was kind of concerning to me too. And then also the palette wasn't wrapped in bubble wrap. It was only wrapped in tissue paper. And that concerned me too, because I was like, oh my goodness, what happens if one of these shadows just comes completely shattered? Like, what am I going to do? I already waited so long for this palette, but thankfully none of them came shattered. None of them came broken. But just after this whole experience, it makes me pause whether to say, you know, should I order from this brand again? Because yes, the shadows are amazing. Yes, I'm really glad I have this palette. But the lack of transparency is not comforting when I'm spending my hard-earned cash on a palette like this. So I don't know what the future is going to hold for me and Shroud. I really do like this palette. I know it's a one-woman show. I've ordered from plenty of one-woman shows. And I understand that things get frantic and, you know, the, the reception of this palette was so amazing. But, you know, transparency is so, so, so important. And not having that transparency just made me pause. All right, everybody, uh, that's it for today's video. Thank you for spending some of your day with me today when I uh, give you a little bit of review of the It's Freaking Bats palette and show you this beautiful eye look. So if you like this video, you should like this video. If you like me, maybe subscribe, uh, maybe comment. Uh, I'll definitely be posting more videos um, about beauty and, and makeup and all that fun stuff. So you should definitely stick around. So thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.